Hello and welcome to Rolling for Romance. This is a demo for the game, so it's probably not super long, but it's basically a group of college students playing DD together and it's a visual novel, romance novel, so we're gonna... Romance novel. <laughs> romance game. So we're gonna go into it. What is your name? It's not Harper. Hang on. Can I enter? Okay. Which pronouns? So your pronouns are here? Yes. Okay, keep your chin up and chest out. Breathe. Okay. You nervously walk into the building, doing your best to seem confident and unbothered. Oh, that's not gonna work. You are at the bottom of the food chain once more, and you could only pray that the college upperclassmen here would be more laid back and friendly than the awful seniors at your high school. Why am I the bottom of the food chain? <laughs> Luckily for you, everyone seemed to be absorbed in their own business to try to get into yours. Groups led by upperclassmen with laminated paper signs taped to their meter sticks clustered together, and the sound of so many people in one place talking over each other was uncomfortably loud. This is what you get when you have every student in the same place at the same time for orientation. You didn't need to worry. As you repeated that to yourself, the hallways no longer seemed as intimidating. You located your classroom and went to, were able to walk into your first ever college class with confidence. Okay. Your professor was standing at the front as you entered and she smiled warmly at you. Hello and good morning. Glad to have you in class. You smiled politely at her and went to sit down in an open seat. A few moments later, a flamboyant looking boy with two-toned hair and a colorful undertucked t-shirt got the same greeting and took a seat next to you. Hi, I'm Jamie. As you turn to introduce yourself, you're interrupted by your professor starting class. Good morning, everyone. Before we get started, I would like to remind everyone that this is a welcoming environment by having everyone introduce themselves. Would anyone like to volunteer to go first? You feel a small twinge of anxiety at the thought of speaking to so many people this early in the morning. You hadn't thought much about how you'd introduce yourself or about professors requiring you to do so. Jamie didn't have a problem raising his hand to go first though. He felt everyone in the classroom relax a little. What's up guys, I'm Jamie, I'm, senior. I'm a senior and I'm a journalism major. A few people started talking about journalism, bringing a, a proud smile to Jamie's face. Since you were sitting beside him, everyone looked at you expectantly. Wait, he's a senior? Like a college senior? What are you doing in my class? Aren't I a fr like new? You sat up a little straighter and cleared your throat, hoping your voice didn't shake. Hi, I'm Mira and I'm a freshman. Um, there's not much else to say about me, I guess. Awkwardly looking around the room and seeing over three dozen students staring back at you, the only logical thing you could think of doing was to nod politely as you sat back down. As soon as the next student had started to speak, Jamie turned to you and started whispering. Hey, psst. I saw you in the library earlier. Oh yeah, that was me. Sorry, I didn't notice you. Nice to meet you, Jamie. I'm Mira. Yeah, I heard. Nice to meet you too, though. By the way, what did you think of orientation? Personally, I thought it was a bit chaotic, but it always is. At least you made it here in one piece, though, right? Wish I could say the same for the group I was leading. I lost half of them on the second day because they wanted to wander around by themselves. You laughed. Orientation had left you a bit of a mess for sure, and they apparently hadn't left unscathed either. Oh yeah, definitely. That's why I was in the library alone, actually. I ran in there to escape the chaos. Didn't see any of your group there, though. Jamie smiled and leaned towards you slightly. It's no big deal. You'll find the library is one of the calmer parts of campus. It's a really beautiful place. Agreed, it really is. Very peaceful. And good for avoiding people, too. Jamie, uh, Jamie grained at your, at your response, but your conversation faded as introductions finished up and class began. You found yourself smiling at Jamie's friendly demeanor and hoped the two of you would end up as friends. You hadn't expected much from your first day, but he seemed genuinely interested in getting to know you and his positive energy was contagious. His openness and acceptance made you feel more comfortable in your new environment and less anxious about how the rest of your classes would pan out. I really won the lottery on the classmate roulette here. Class passed quickly after that, and when you started packing up, Jamie did the same. When he finished, he paused to wait for you. You're really cool. I'm glad we have class together. You seemed genuine, and you smiled. Your classmates continued to filter out as, the, as your professor also backed up, but the two of you stayed put as you continued your conversation. Same to you. I was pretty worried about making friends and how the, op how the people here would be, so it's nice that I got to meet you. Uh, uh, uh. Say... <laughs> Same to you. I was pretty worried about making friends and how the people here would be, so it's nice that I got to meet someone like you. 
Agreed. And hey, if you're worried about making friends, if you have ever some free time, I run a club with some of my friends and we meet in the library every week. We're always looking for more people to join and you would be perfect. You should stop by. What kind of club? It's a Dungeons and Dra Dragons club. You're familiar with that, right? Yes. That's great. If you're familiar with it, that just means it'll be a lot easier to get you accustomed to the club. But for real, you should join us. We're looking for a fourth player to properly round out our party composition so that we have every role. You know, like healer, two damage dealers, and a tank. Plus, everyone in the club is super cool. They just started making their characters. I promise you'll have a good time, and they'll even fudge some ro dice rolls if you're in danger So you're since you're new. Jamie grinned, seemingly satisfied with his engenetic bitch. He thought about it. If you joined something like this after school, you could make friends more easily. Plus, Jamie said they were cool, so it wasn't necessarily like you'd be interacting with complete strangers, right? That does sound pretty cool, but I'll have to give it some thought if that's okay. Yeah, that's totally fine. I can take You can take your time. Check some other group groups out, and if you decide ours is a fit, then that's great. Jamie didn't sound upset by the idea of you not joining, and he felt a bit relieved. It did sound like something you would want to check out, but it was too early in the year to promise any commitments just yet. The thought of seeing what Jamie was so excited to plan explain was tempting. Sorry. The thought of seeing what Jamie was so excited to explain was tempting. So you convinced yourself that maybe just checking it out if you decide tomorrow wouldn't be fully committing to it. You just took a peek. Thanks, Jamie. I'll check it out. Yeah, no problem. As he finished his sentence, Jamie fumbled around in his bag to look for something before pulling out a piece of pen and paper. He scribbled on it and handed the paper to you, and you saw that he'd written a 10 digit number in his blocky handwriting. Here, let me give you my number. Let's talk after class sometime. Sure. Jamie shot one last smile your way before excusing himself and leaving the classroom, leaving you a little shell shocked from his enthusiasm. Whoa, he re he's really upbeat. I wonder how he keeps that up, especially on the first day of the new semester. I'd be exhausted. Same? Well, I guess it's just food for thought. After seeing Jamie take off in such a quick manner, you decided it was finally time to get going as well. After all, you did have more classes to attend that day. You walked out of the classroom with a newfound sense of optimism. The prospect of joining a club make and making new friends has lifted your spirits considerably, and you felt more at ease with the idea of having a fresh start in a new place. As you made your way through the crowded hallways, you couldn't help but notice the diverse range of people around you. College truly was a melting pot of cultures and personalities, and you were excited to explore everything it had to offer. As you made your way back to the library, you saw a poster advertising the club. It was adorned with colorful illustrations and fantastical creatures and adventures. The poster certainly piqued your interest, and you made a note that it said the next meeting was tonight. You had a class at it just before the start time, so it was perfect timing. You couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement at the thought of diving headfirst into a world of adventure and magic, just as Jamie had promised. With your first class officially over, it was time for your second class of the day, theater. Theater was something you had always been interested in, but you had never taken a formal class before. You were excited to finally have the opportunity to explore your passion, but the thought of being surrounded by so many new faces made you feel anxious. Plus, there was the added pressure that came with having to be up on stage at some point to pass the class, where you would have to present yourself to a sea of faces you didn't recognize. Then why did you take theater? <laughs> As you entered the auditorium, you saw a raised curtain stage in the center of the rows of seats surrounding it. Circular stage, sorry. The seats were already filled with students, some chatting excitedly with the others while others sat quietly scrolling through their phones. You looked around, trying to find a place to put yourself in a way where the least amount of people would take notice of your existence. It seemed like everyone already knew each other and you felt like an outsider. You took a seat in one of the rows towards the back, feeling a bit self-conscious. As the teacher started to speak, you tried to focus on what was being said, but you, your mind kept drifting to thoughts of not fitting in or, and being judged. Carefully, you started to survey the room and the people in it, your eyes landing on one boy in particular who seemed to almost be out of it. They were beautiful, with clear tan skin and dark mysterious eyes. They looked like a love interest straight out of a meet cute romance novel. You found yourself staring at them, and it wasn't long before you unfortunately made eye contact. You awkwardly looked away, breaking out of the trance they seemed to put you in. After a few seconds, you looked back in their direction. At second glance, they seemed to be upset. But upon closer inspection, you realized that while they were definitely upset, it wasn't because they were nervous like you were. 
Instead, you could practically see steam coming out of their ears as they clenched a piece of paper in their shaking hands, slowly crumpling it into nothing. You felt a bit surprised and awkwardly returned your gaze to the theater, allowing your mind to wander for the remainder of the class period as the professor droned on about first aid procedures. After class ended, you made your way to your next class, Sociology. The classroom was located on the opposite side of the building, so you had to walk a bit to get there. As you walked, you noticed the various groups of students huddled together, laughing and chatting away. It made you realize how much you missed having solid groups of friends to hang out with. You arrived at the classroom door, taking a deep breath before entering. The classroom was mostly full, but you were relieved to see that there were still some empty seats available. You quickly chose a seat in the middle of the room, hoping to blend in with the crowd. I thought I was given the emptiest class sections. Oh please, if there is a higher power, help me now. The teacher walked in almost immediately after you, finished you after you finished your thought, proving to be your saving grace as the class quieted down while he introduced himself. He began with a lecture on the importance of sociology and its relevance to people's everyday lives. He found the topic somewhat interesting, much to your surprise, and you listened intently as the teacher spoke. As the lecture went on, the teacher began to ask questions to the class, and you felt your palms get sweaty with nerves. However, as the teacher asked for volunteers to answer a question, you saw a hand go up from the boy sitting next to you. He spoke shakily, clearly self-conscious. He seemed to gather his resolve and speak with proper clarity, impressing both the teacher and the rest of the class. He's struggling too, but he's so much braver than I am. You felt a sense of admiration for his bravery, and it made you realize that you needed to work on being more confident in yourself. Perhaps with time, you could also work up the courage to speak up in class. I can definitely start ta taking small steps to improve. If I stay an anxious mess my entire college career, I'm bound for failure and begging to be stepped on. That's it. I've decided to become the best version of myself that I can be. I don't want to act like one of those cliche dating sim protagonists. Ah! <laughs> As you reach your resolution, you turn into your professor announcing that class was over, which startled you. Had you really zoned out for that long? The boy who had answered the question earlier witnessed your shock and laughed a little. But when you turned to possibly start a conversation with him, he avoided your gaze and shifted the face away from you as he picked up his belongings. Full shoulder. You got up and collected your items before re rerouting yourself to the main entrance in an attempt to locate the placement of your next class, Earth Science 101. You found yourself rereading your schedule over and over with no luck and began wandering aimlessly looking for a classroom that even vaguely resembled the one you were supposed to be in. A few minutes later, you found yourself in front of an exit, debating whether wandering on campus looking lost while searching for wherever you were supposed to go was worth it. You were about to give up hope when you saw a group of girls attempting to get back into the building, beckoning you with their hands and pleading faces when they realized that the door they were trying to enter through was locked from the inside. You walked over to push the door open for them. When you opened it, the girl in front smiled brightly at you and you were momentarily stunned by how pretty she was. Hey, thanks. We we would have been late without you. You're a lifesaver. The girls behind her chorused their, chorused their thanks as they came through, and when the last one passed you, you went to the exit before overhearing them. Earthside 101 is this way, girls. Hurry up. I've heard the professor's really strict, and I'm not about to be late for the first day of my senior year because we had to hear about Delta Zeta President's latest boyfriend. Bingo. Why do I have so many classes with seniors? Doing a complete 180, you turn around and follow the girl, silently offering up your thanks to whatever was listening for sending you a nudge in the correct direction. As you followed behind them, you caught, a, caught other pieces of gossip. Last year, the sorority president had a nasty breakup with someone in the same fraternity as her current boyfriend. One of the girls had seen her political science professor messy drunk at a bar last week before a class even started. The very pretty girl who had smiled at you when you opened the door for her was single. <laughs> Why is that? Okay. It was all idle chatter and you felt a little bad about eavesdropping, but they were being allowed and it was kind of fascinating to hear about their lives. Luckily, your professor didn't deduct any participation points since it was the first day of classes. You took a deep breath. You found a seat towards the back of the classroom and tried to focus on the lecture. The teacher spoke about the basics of geology, meteorology, and oceanography. Oceanography and you found the information less fascinating than you usually did. As the lecture continued, you started to feel more comfortable and confident in classrooms, yet you found your mind racing 
to connect possible relations between your boredom and confidence. When the teacher asks a question, you raise your hand, surprising yourself with your sudden boldness. You answer the question correctly, and, and as your professor smiles at you approvingly, you felt a sense of pride in yourself and your newfound confidence. The rest of the class went smoothly, and you've left feeling proud of yourself for stepping out of your comfort zone. You even felt a sense of excitement for what else college had in store for you, which was new, very new, and almost made you nervous again. With all your classes done for the day, you finally decided that yes, you were going to give Jamie's D&D club a shot. You made your way through the building and came to a stop in front of the library. This was it. With your newfound confidence from successfully managing your first day of college, this should be easy for you. This is where Jamie said the club was. I'm sure he'll be happy to see that I showed up. With that thought in mind, you pushed the doors open without a second thought and fearlessly entered the library. The library was just, a beautiful, just as beautiful and cozy to be in as you remembered. Oh, they have like little ladders. It's nice to be here again. Now where are they? You searched for Jamie and his friends for a few minutes, getting anxious so you couldn't find them. Did you read the paper, the poster wrong? You pulled your phone out, getting ready to call him when you hear voices behind a shelf of books. You peek around the shelf and there they were, three people sitting all together, and they seemed familiar. Hmm, man. The boy had seen crumpling paper in your theater class earlier seemed to be struggling with writing something down. They tugged out a lock of hair as they glared down at the paper. It looked like they were trying to draw something or someone, but it was too far away for you to figure out what. Damn it. You know, if you want help, I can totally help. The pretty girl from Earth Science moved a little closer to them, peeking over their shoulder at the paper in front of them. Huh? It looks fine. What could be wrong with it? I really like it. Huh. If it looks that fine, why are they so upset? Dear the boy sucked in a deep breath. If they looked agitated before, they were definitely upset now. They started to pout, tapping a quick rhythm on the table with their pencil. It's supposed to be a forest elf, but I can't seem to figure it out. Oh, I can actually help with that. The boy who had ignored you in sociology class was towards the table to see what the issue with the drawing was. Maybe he'd avoid you in class because he hadn't felt comfortable talking to you, but here with these two, he seems much more at ease. Uh, Asher? I thought you were having issues with the sketch, but this already looks like a forest elf to me. What? No, there's something missing here. I'm gonna try again in a second. Asher crumpled up your paper in frustration and threw it away from the table, and it rolled to a stop in front of you. The three of them hadn't noticed you yet, and you were too nervous to say hello without Jamie there. You picked up the paper to uncrumple it, wanting to see the drawing for yourself. So what was he so annoyed by? You handled, you handled it gingerly, being careful not to tear it as you went, and when you had it open fully, you couldn't help but stare in confusion. It was a messy sketch of an elf who looked especially like a taller version of Asher. They were wearing armor and had a bow slung over their shoulder. The sketch was pretty in an unfinished way. It's beautiful. What don't they like about it? A light tap on your shoulder startled you and you spun around to see Jamie. You relaxed immediately and returned his bright grin with one of your own, heart settling from the scare. Hey, you made it. <clears throat> and you've seen my friends too. Right now they're working on getting visuals together for their characters. You should say hi. They won't bite or anything. Jamie gently nudged you forward towards the table and only stopping once you walked forward. The other three looked up when, when you were a few feet away and their eyes light with recognition. Oh, are you the one Jamie was telling us about? Welcome, I'm Sasha. Oh hi, welcome, my name's Belle. Hey, name's Asher. You're a fourth player? Hi, I might be your fourth player. Jamie said I should come to check it out. You gave him a small wave. Saved from the awkwardness when Jamie excitedly handed you a piece of paper and a pencil to start drawing with. You want me to draw my character, right? Like what they'd look like? Yeah, that's right. And I can help if you need. Jamie, you've already been a huge help. Sounds like Jamie to me. You can look at mine as inspiration if you want. Really? You mean that? Of course I do. I mean, I, th I think it's pretty cool if you ask me. You looked over at her drawing and it was just as good as Asher's, if not a little neater. Trash's character vaguely looked like her except for a few key differences. Her character had horns, messier hair, goat-like legs, and a giant axe that looked very cool and very ready for a fictional battle. I love it. I think that might be just the inspiration I needed for mine. Glad I could help. Looking at Jamie's character design was really helpful for me when I first started. Sasha turned to the others when you started drawing what you could imagine for yourself. 
Why don't you guys show what you have too? I'm not done with my redesign yet. I just need a little more time. You've seen their first design, and the thought that they didn't think it was good enough was mind-boggling to you. If they considered their first draft bad, then what were they going to think of yours? Well, I think your first draft looked great. I'm still not really done with mine either, but I'm trying. Seeing everyone working hard on getting a character concept together helped you ease into trying to do the same. It's interesting seeing how serious they're all about this. I hope my character comes out looking just as good as theirs. Jimmy plopped himself down in the seat next to you to help you create a character. Hmm, what to pick? There's a lot of options, so it can be a little overwhelming. Hey, I know. What about playing a tiefling? It's a pretty standard D&D race and very beginner friendly. I have a few reference photos for them. Here, take my phone. Jimmy hands you his phone and you take a moment to scroll through the various reference images his unnamed search browser provided. Hmm, sounds good to me. You started drawing your tiefling and your mind danced around possibilities for design choices. You were sitting with people you hoped would soon be your friends and you were excited to finally about finally having the college experience you'd wanted. I can feel it. I can do it. With Jamie here, I feel I can, I can really do this. Hey, it's starting to look really good. Nice. Good job. That pose is great. Oh, I love the color you picked for your character's outfit. It complements their skin tone nicely. Not bad. I like the tail. The brace made you feel warm and excited about the campaign. Hopefully, the day you took all this group close friends came quickly. You finished quickly, eager to start playing. Done. You showed your finished tiefling to Jamie, who shot you a thumbs up. And you got it. This looks good for now. Thanks, Jamie. Do we start playing tonight? Jamie shook his head. Nope. Character creation is for tonight. You look pretty tired, too. So head back to your dorm and we'll meet here next week. Same time. We'll roll up character sheets and pick out your class then, too. Sounds good. See you in class, everyone. You got a chorus of goodbyes in return, and Jamie gave you a friendly wink. See you in class. Waving goodbye, you walk out of the library. The rest of the day was a blur, and you can barely remember tucking yourself into bed and going to sleep. End of intro. Oh! Oh, you just got to meet the characters. Okay. So that's going to be our D&D group. Mm. It's hard to say what I think about it so far. But, uh, I mean, I'll keep an eye on it when it does come out completely. I like the concept. The concept's interesting, and so I want to play it. We'll see. Anyway, I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed the sneak peek, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.